You're listening to Men of Abundance, episode 154. It's Pay It Forward, Aloha Friday. And today's conversation just may push some buttons. And I'm okay with that. Welcome to Men of Abundance, the podcast for those looking to level up their lives by hanging out with some of the greatest leaders and established professionals in our community, living a life of integrity, honor, and the abundance mentality. Prepare to pay it forward with your host, former army medic turned lifestyle entrepreneur, Wally Carmichael. Hello. Aloha, men of abundance. It is Pay It Forward. Aloha Friday. I am Wally Carmichael, your founder and host of the Men of Abundance podcast, the Pay It Forward community. And today is Pay It Forward. Aloha Friday. This is where I basically bring a couple of my thoughts together and it's just a solo show. It's just me saying what is on my mind today and maybe it's something I picked up over the week or something I've just been thinking about. Maybe one of you guys just triggered me to say something. Who knows? But I'm feeling kind of crazy today and this subject is probably going to push a few buttons. And I hope so. If it does push a button, at least let's have the conversation. If you want to have this conversation with me and others, then you can do that at the Men of Abundance community. You can request access if you're not already a member. If you're a man, you can request access at menofabundance.com forward slash members or just click on the members only tab at the top of any one of the pages at menofabundance.com. So today's subject is, it's not the sport that develops the young men and women. So where did this idea come from in my head? So recently I read a book written by Lewis Howes. I posted it on my Facebook, and you should go check it out, Men and Women, even though it's kind of, it, the title kind of gears towards men, but really it isn't. It's called The Mask of Masculinity. And one of the masks we wear, I think Lewis talks about seven different masks, and one of them is the sports mask. And men, both young men and grown men, they hide behind this sports mask. Young men hide behind it and they use it as a way to express their anger. They express their anger on the field or on the court or whatever the sport is. And they're using the mask, they're using the sport to hide this anger and and to get this anger out of and the frustration out of them. This is shown time and time again. And then as as an older man, either they use the sport as and they play the sport and they use it for the same reason or they use the gym and they go in the gym to get out all of this aggression to hide down all of these emotions that they have and all of this anger that's been building up over years and years and they're not really talking about it and it's not fixing the problem and then other older men that don't play the sport they hide behind the sport because they have this man bravado and they feel that if you know they they represent with a team and they represent with a few players And they live vicariously through those teams and through those men. And then at the same time, they're hiding their own frustrations. And that's kind of what Lewis talks about in the book. Well, that prompted me to watch this documentary that I had heard about, that Lewis had heard about. And the eighth time he finally went and watched this documentary called The Mask You Live In. And in this documentary, it really goes deep into the masks that we wear. And it touches on some of these masks that Lewis talks about, but he really defines them, I feel, much better than the documentary. But what the documentary does is goes from childhood and talks about how the whole gender thing, it talks about this whole gender thing. So if you're really curious about why there is a difference between gender and masculinity... The Mask You Live In is definitely a documentary you should check out because it references many other statistics and data that really drives this home. And I'll have a short video clip. I think it's a YouTube clip. I'll have it posted in the show notes, so go check that out. But it also talks about sports. And one of the prominent characters in this documentary is Joe Ehrman, coach and former NFL player. And he is a huge advocate of what we're talking about here, about how a great coach is what develops men and women. A great coach is what takes young men and women and truly develops them. A sport that has a terrible coach that is just yelling in their face and telling them, you know, profanities and just belittling the the kids out there on the field is not a great coach. The coach is there to lead, train, and mentor these young men and women to grow up and be strong men and women. And a great coach does not do that by screaming and yelling profanities and belittling people. 
You know, when I was in the 82nd Airborne Division, I always had these jackasses that came up into my face and always wanted to get up in my face and yell at me and cuss and belittle me and all this other kind of stuff. You know, I didn't respect those guys. The guys that walked up, stood straight, looked me straight in the eye and told me what I needed to do and then helped me do it, stood there and watched me do it and trained me the proper way instead of just yelling orders at me and telling me what to do. Those are the guys who I respect and those are the guys that I always remember. I still to this day remember my drill sergeant from over 28 years ago, Drill Sergeant Reed. When he walked in the room, it was like your dad walked in the room. It was like the biggest figure in the world. That man was unbelievable and we respected him and he never cussed. He never yelled. He never belittled us. Not like the other drill sergeants. See, it takes a little man, it takes a small man to belittle another man. It doesn't matter how big you are in stature. If you're an insecure little man, then you belittle other people. That's what you get off on. That's what some of these drill sergeants were, and that's what some of these NCOs and officers were that I dealt with in the military. They were small. They were tiny little people in their, in their mind and in their heart. So they felt the power when they were able to belittle somebody else. That's not a great coach. That's not a great mentor. That's not a strong man. They come off as a strong man, but they're not. They're bullies. Now, I do believe team sports can be a productive activity for kids to do without a doubt. And yes, sports can play a part in some development of some kids, but not all kids. In fact, sports can screw some kids up, at least initially. And it has a lot to do with the coach and what the way the program is being monitored. My experience shows me that it's a great coach that develops young boys and girls into strong, compassionate, hardworking, and trustworthy men and women. For instance, my high school football coach was one of the first great examples of a man in my life. My sixth grade teacher was the first real man in my life. Now, don't get me wrong. Now, don't get me wrong. My dad was a very kind-hearted man. He was kind to a fault. He meant well. But he wanted to be a friend. He wanted to hang out with me and my friends and my brother. He drank beer with us at an early age and talked about screwing around with women around me and my brother. And at the time, all of my friends and everybody thought he was the coolest dad ever. And at the time, so did I. But the fact of the matter is he was disrespecting my mom. He was showing me and my brother that it was okay to drink underage. Hell, at one point in time, I remember being at a house and we had a pool table in this house and my dad had a couple of his friends over and they had a girl that they picked up on the road who was dancing and stripping on the pool table. And the funny thing about that story is, true story, that girl ended up being a man that one of my dad's friends picked up on the street and brought over to our house. This is what I was exposed to as a young man. And it gets worse. Maybe I'll have those conversations later, but not for right now. My point is, my sixth grade teacher and my high school football coach were the two men who showed me a real man respects himself. A real man respects his wife, he respects his children, and they showed me the value of learning new skills. Those two men were examples of who I strive to be as a husband and a father. And I happen to know that those two guys also greatly influenced many of my classmates. Now, like I said, team sports can be great for the growth of our young men and women, but only if a great coach is leading the team. And check this out. We are never too old to get great coaches into our life. Get a coach. Get yourself a coach. Whatever it is that you're struggling with, find a coach that you resonate with. Myself, I don't care who it is. If it's somebody else that I've had a conversation with on the show or go search somewhere else, like I said in the last episode, find yourself a coach. And if you think that I'm the coach that you've been looking for, request a call with me. Let's get on the line for about 30 minutes. Let's decide together if you're fit for either my one-on-one program or one of my group programs. To request a call with me, go to menofabundance.com forward slash coaching or just click on the coaching tab at the top of any one of the pages at menofabundance.com and simply fill out the request form. Be as honest as you possibly can because we're going to have a very candid conversation once we get on the phone so that we can truly make a decision if you're right for one of my programs. Now, go out and live your life of abundance and men, make sure to pay it forward.